Greetings guys, this is Sam and Nishan Sagunath welcoming you to a new lesson under my study for income tax. And in this video, we'll be learning about a very interesting topic and that is agricultural income. See, for ages, for centuries, our country, India, used to be an agrarian economy. The whole of our country was mainly dependent on agriculture and it was this agricultural produce that made us one of the, if not the most powerful countries in the whole world long back. All the other nations in the world looked up to us because we were strong and it was the agrarian economy of ours which made us strong. So it is a given fact that our roots, our country's foundation was built on agriculture, right? We as a nation is an agrarian, agrarian economy, right? So our constitution to promote, to help, to support anyone who's venturing out into bringing in work or venturing out to start business within the field of agriculture has brought in a lot of support measures and direct and indirect promotive measures. One such support given by the constitution is by way of a leniency towards people who are in the agricultural sector. So with that said, it must be clear for you by now that we as a nation are an agrarian economy. Agrarian economy. So this is our foundation. This is our roots. And in case any SSE, any person wants to venture out towards our roots, towards our foundation of agriculture, our constitution has brought in a lot of supportive measures. One such supportive measure is by way of giving a lot of relaxations, lot of relaxations as far as their taxability is concerned. All right. So for any SSE who wants to do or who wants to make agriculture his way of living, who wants to take up agriculture as his business, the government has brought in, sorry, not the government, the constitution has brought in a lot of relaxations and one relaxation is concerning the taxability of the income they earn from their agricultural activities or agricultural jobs or business or whatever it is. And that's what we are going to learn here, which is the special treatment of agricultural income while computing the tax payable of an SSE. All right. So yes. Before heading into the study, let me give you a quick overview of our chapter. What all we will learn here. Number one, we will understand what agricultural income is. All the basics and fundamentals towards the concept of agricultural income. Number two and three are specific topics. And number two, we'll be learning about certain special categories of SSEs who have incomes which are partially agricultural and partially non-agricultural. All right, so SSEs who have agricultural income and non-agricultural income. Their total income is a mix of them both. How to treat or how to compute their total income. And finally, number three is a very unique item called partial integration. Please do keep in mind the partial that you see here and the partial that you see here and here are not one and the same. Completely two different things. All right. Don't get confused or don't mix them up. Okay. So out of the whole syllabus, topics two and three are the most important ones. All right. So yes, without further delay, let's head into topic number one. That is understanding what agricultural income is. See, section 10.1. See, section 10 is a section wherein Income Tax Act, Income Tax Act tells us about a lot of tax-free incomes. All right, that is incomes exempted from tax. Section 10 is a place where Income Tax Act mentions about a lot of such incomes. Out of them all, the first one that the Income Tax Act specifies is agricultural income. So section 10.1, section 10.1 discusses about the taxability of agricultural income. 
and as per section 10.1, agricultural income earned by a taxpayer in India is exempt from tax. So, agricultural income earned by an SSE in India is exempt from tax. You do not have to pay tax. That's what section 10.1 tells us about. But then what is this particular category of agricultural income? What is agricultural income? See, by common parlance, general usage, agricultural income can be understood as the income that an SSE earns out of doing agricultural activities. And agricultural activities are nothing but cultivation, farming, harvesting of crops, etc. etc. Right? That is the general explanation or the dictionary explanation as to what agricultural activity is. And any income that an SSE or a person derives out of such activity can be called as agricultural income. That is just going by the meaning of the words and term. But Income Tax Act is very specific as to what agricultural income is. And they mention all this under Section 21A. So Section 21A defines what an agricultural income is. And there they have divided it into three clauses, clause A, B and C, which splits up the definition of agricultural income into three categories. Let's check each of those categories one by one. As per section 21A, agricultural income generally means, number one, any rent or revenue derived from land which is situated in India and used for agricultural purposes. So any rent or any sort of revenue that an SSE derives from a land which is in India and is used for agricultural purposes, agro activities. All right. Simple. Yeah. So you have a plot of land. And you have given this plot of land for lease. And this leased out land is used for agricultural purposes by your tenant. Alright, so the land, which is an agricultural land, you have rented it out and your tenant pays you rent for the same. Now this particular rent, this rent can be in cash or can be in kind. Say the tenant tells you or as per the agreement, the tenant agrees to pay you 10,000 rupees per month as rent. Fine. That can be treated as agricultural income, that is exempt from tax. Or as per your income, sorry, as per your rental agreement, it states that your rent shall be paid in kind. Alright, or the tenant decides to pay you rent in kind. Say the tenant farms or cultivates potatoes and they cultivate around like 10,000, they get a harvest of 10,000 kgs of potatoes a month. Tenant gives you 1,000 kg potatoes as rent. Fine. That 1,000 kg potato, whatever income that you receive by way of that 1,000 kg potato, agricultural income. No taxability. Understood? Fine. Simple. Point number B. Any income derived from such land by agriculture operations, including processing of agricultural produce, so as to render it fit for the market or sale of such produce. Here, you are not giving it out for rent. Rather, you are using that land. And you are carrying out a lot of agriculture operations. And from those agriculture operations, you are getting an income. This income shall be treated as agricultural income and will be exempt from tax. But the thing is, Income Tax Act is very specific as to what all they can or what all they are categorizing as agricultural operations. Let's see what all they are. And it's on the basis of that explanation, you understand whether what an SSE earns is agricultural income or not and thus decide its taxability. Fine. As per the Income Tax Act, agricultural operations can be split into basic operations and subsequent operations. Basic and subsequent. So basic is something that happens first and after basic, we have subsequent. All right. So what are basic operations? In a nutshell, basic operations are nothing but operations which are directly related, directly related to initiating the farming or agricultural processes. So it includes cultivation of land, tilling of land, sowing of seeds, planting of seeds, planting of crops, etc. etc. So these all these activities are what? These are all activities which a farmer or a cultivator does to initiate, to initiate the agricultural process. Right? So cultivation, tilling, sowing, planting, all these things, 
also any operations that would require any human skill any human skill directly on the land that is any other operation other than this which requires human skill to make to make the land ready for agriculture to prepare or to set the land ready for agriculture all these activities are called basic operations all right so all the initial activities are called basic operations subsequent operations are not Thing but activities carried out after basic operations and this is for growing the produce growth of the produce and their preservation and their preservation so a lot of activities which are carried out for the growth and preservation of the produce like weeding digging soil such that our crops grow freely etc are all subsequent operations so activities taken with respect to the growth of our crops and their preservation can be classified as subsequent operations and not only that and not only that any activity taken up for making our product fit to use to make our agricultural product fit to use things like tending pruning cutting harvesting etc see pruning is an activity wherein a cultivator or farmer once he plucks all his once he takes out all his crops removes unnecessary parts from the crop say the crop will have a lot of branches or sticks or thorns or roots sticking out of it which is not marketable or saleable or not required in the final product they take out all these things and this is called pruning cutting self explanatory say our product is pretty big and you need to cut and make it small pieces make it into smaller portions to make it fit to use harvesting you know tending again an activity wherein farmers spend time and check all their produce check all the produce from time to time to ensure that they are all in good condition and fit for use in the market so all these activities are also classified as subsequent operations so basic basic refers to everything done to initiate the process of farming whereas subsequent in one hand is respect to all the activities that ensure the growth and preservation of the product and in another hand subsequent operations refers to a lot of activities which are carried out in order to ensure that our product is fit to use now once we find out whether we are doing basic or subsequent or whether we are doing both their treatment will be different if the ssc is only doing basic operations then the income that the ssc incurs sorry earns out of that operation will be treated as agricultural income if the ssc does both basic and subsequent then again that will be treated as agricultural income that means this income shall be exempt but if the ssc only does subsequent operations say the ssc has set up a facility where they only do pruning they only do pruning of farmed produce then the income that the ssc gets out of such activity of only pruning shall not be treated as agriculture it will be treated as non agricultural income and shall be taxable all right it won't get the 101 benefit it benefits from section 101 fine so all that you have to keep in mind is in case basic comes in case basic comes if basic on is on its own or if basic comes along with subsequent then it will be an agricultural activity and the income shall be agricultural income and it will be exempt from tax but if there is no basic only subsequent then even though it can be classified as an agricultural activity agricultural operation it shall not be treated as an agricultural income and it shall be taxable understood so based on what the ssc is doing whether basic or subsequent or both you decide its nature into agricultural or non agricultural clear clause c any income attributable to a farmhouse subject to satisfaction of certain conditions all right you know what a farmhouse is right it is nothing but a building wherein wherein that building is directly related to the agricultural land and used for the agricultural activity all right now what the income tax act tells here is say you have a farmhouse and if you satisfy certain conditions any income that you derive earn out of this farmhouse shall be treated as an agricultural income and will be free from tax let's see what those conditions are condition number 1 building is in the land or in the immediate vicinity say this is our agriculture land our building should either be in the land within the land or say there is another plot of land here or there is a road here a normal road and our building is situated over here so our building is in the immediate vicinity of the land right that's fine 
It's just that the building should be in the land or should be in the immediate vicinity of the land. By immediate vicinity, what it means is very close by, nearby. Condition number two, it should be occupied by the cultivator or the receiver of rent. So, this building should be occupied by the person who is carrying out the agricultural activity. That is the cultivator. Or it should be occupied by the receiver of rent. That is the owner. Understood? Right? Number three, condition number three. It shall be used as a dwelling house, storehouse, outhouse, etc. So what condition number three tells us is that this particular building shall be used as a farmhouse or a dwelling house or a storehouse or an outhouse. See, the, all these houses that I mentioned right now are all houses which are directly related, which has a direct, direct, straight relation to the whole agricultural operations carried out. Alright, it cannot be used as a guest house or anything which is not directly related to agricultural purposes. Understood? And finally, last condition, this particular land wherein this building is situated or this agriculture land shall be assessed to land revenue. That is, they are subject to loss of land revenue or in case they are not, then this land should be in a rural area. In a rural area. If all these conditions are satisfied, again repeating condition number one, building within the land or in vicinity. Condition number two, occupied by cultivator or by receiver of rent. Condition number three, three farmhouse, outhouse, dwelling house, storehouse, etc. And finally, condition number four, this land is either access to land revenue or is in a rural area. If all these conditions are satisfied, then any income, any income that you receive out of this farmhouse shall be treated as agricultural income and will be free from tax. Fine? Clear, right? Simple, simple, simple. Now, if you check the last point, therein, it has been mentioned that this particular land shall be assessed to land revenue and in case if it's not assessed to land revenue, it should be in a rural area. Now, what is rural area? How to understand whether an area is rural or not? Again, here, Income Tax Act is very specific. Income Tax Act has brought in a specific method to classify a land as rural or urban based on the population of that area and a particular aerial distance. Alright. So in majority of the books, you will find an explanation as to what an urban area is and how to find out an urban area based on this population and aerial distance. But then I am not taking that route. I am taking a different route. I am going to explain what is a rural area using population and aerial distance and what is not a rural area shall be treated as an urban area. Okay. Following land shall be considered as rural land based on what population of the municipality or the cantonment board or whatever it is and a particular methodology of measuring aerial distance. So it's those two things which determine whether an area is rural or not. First category, population of the municipality or cantonment or whatever it is, is less than 10,000. Say, say, this is, this is our municipality or cantonment board and the population here is less than 10,000. Then, this area, this whole area shall be treated as rural. This area shall be treated as rural. So, point one clear. Any area with less than 10,000 population shall be treated as rural area. This area can be municipality or cantonment board or whatever way that they are classified. Next, in case the population goes beyond 10,000, then such areas cannot be determined or classified as rural areas. Not just that area, up to a certain distance from that area cannot be classified as a rural area. That's what the next three points tells us about. The next three points tells us about situations where or areas where the whole population, the whole population is exceeding, exceeding 10,000. Point number one. Population is 10,000 or more, but does not exceed 1 lakh. So, let's take an area. Let's take an area. Here, the population is 10k or plus. 10k or plus, but, but less than, but less than or equal to 1 lakh. Population is definitely more than 10,000. Now, what happens here is, this area cannot be, this particular area cannot be treated as a rural area. This will be an urban area. And not just that, 
2 kilometers radius up to 2 kilometers radius up to 2 kilometers not radius distance from this area say all the points from every point this is a 2 kilometer circumference drawn 2 kilometer even this will be an urban area anything beyond this anything beyond this will be rural understood simple simple stuff right now in case the population is exceeding 1 lakh population is exceeding 1 lakh say this is our municipality and our population is exceeding 1 lakh but but it is less than it is less than or equal to 10 lakh it is not exceeding 10 lakhs in such a case this will definitely be a sorry this will definitely be an urban area and up to a distance of 6 kilometers sorry 6 kilometers shall be treated as again an urban area so this whole area and an aerially measured 6 kilometer distance aerially measured 6 kilometer distance so from every point the closest point this is a 6 km circumference 6 km not 6 km circumference the distance the distance will be 6 km from each point and this particular area shall also be treated as urban anything beyond will be rural anything beyond will be rural and finally and finally if the population exceeds 10 lakhs If the population exceeds 10 lakhs, say our area, and here our population exceeds 10 lakhs, more than 10 lakhs. Here again, this will be an urban area. This will be an urban area, and not just that, a total of eight kilometer distance, eight kilometer distance from each of the endpoints of this land, shall be treated as an urban area. anything beyond will be a rural area so understood understood so if you get the population of a municipality as 25000 then it will fall under the second point and what you should do is go beyond 2 kilometers go beyond 2 kilometers to get a rural area so if an area is within 2 kilometers and the population of that area is 25000 then that will be an urban area all right we have an we have a plot this plot is situated within a municipality within 4 kilometers or 5 kilometers from a municipality within 5 kilometers from a municipality and we check the population of that municipality the population of that municipality is 2 lakhs 2 lakhs and our area is within 5 kilometers from that municipality whether our area is rural or urban it will be definitely urban why because if the population goes beyond 1 lakh then in order to be rural we should be at least 6 kilometers away got it so understand understood the concept pretty simple right yeah so yes that's how you determine a rural area and finally one last point any income derived from saplings or seedlings grown in a nursery that is this is not an agricultural land rather it's a nursery you know what a nursery is right places where people conduct business of selling saplings and seedlings it also shall be deemed to be agricultural income all right so understood all the basics of agricultural income yes clear simple understood all the concepts of agricultural operations basic subsequent farmhouse everything yes So yes that solved the basics and fundamentals that you need to know with respect to what an agricultural income is next we learn the case where necessary as a total income which is partially agricultural and partially non agricultural and that i'll teach you in my next video so winding up this video for now hope you got a really good lesson in case you have any doubt please feel free to reach out i am here to provide all sort of assistance that you would require to make your journey of understanding income tax at the best So yes signing off this is CM Nishant Raghunath see you in my next lecture till then stay safe and take care goodbye